you commute into the office on the same train each day. You get to the office, you get your coffee, you sit at a desk, this piece of wood, and you're there for eight hours. It's like a prison to me. It's the physical environment that's built to separate and silo. Okay, well you don't need to know this kind of information. You should only know what you need to do to stuff this tube into this bottle or whatever. We're now tethered to devices that beep at us all day long. 47 reply alls that consist of two word answers. On average, 77% uh, of the UK workforce feels that a productive day in the office is clearing their email. Oh my God. You know, it's just shocking to think that actually the process of work has become work itself. When, when did that happen? A study in the UK a few years ago showed that your average information worker, you know, was interrupted perhaps seven to 11 times an hour. And this resulted in men in a 15 point drop in IQ temporarily, which is the equivalent to being stoned. I mean, one recent French study, the chief executive said that only 11% of his workforce were really excited and enthused. 70% there was just a way to earn money to keep their family alive. And 19% were actively prepared to sabotage the organization they disliked it so much. The world of work is changing. On the one hand, we have incredibly high levels of worker disengagement, and there are dire predictions that up to 50% of the jobs in the United States are at risk from automation in the next two decades. But on the other hand, we have new companies creating value faster than at any point in human history. We're seeing billion dollar startups inside a single calendar year. That kind of stuff is happening on the back of that information technology. And we can feel the potential. The digital world, brings us a tremendous amount of novelty and new ideas and new insights and new people, new relationships, new opportunities. People have an impact in society and their work uh, in a way that exceeds simply what their pocketbook can do. So what I see is just this untapped potential energy and it's all because of the systems and processes and mindset that we're using. If we just change the mindset, suddenly there's you know untapped capability, untapped potential. To learn at faster rates, to achieve our potential much faster. So you enjoy it and what you're producing is more valuable to other people. It's a win-win. When you think about the huge amount of untapped brain power, the closer we looked, the more we realized that the way we work has not kept up with the rapid pace of change in the world. The offices and cubicles we work in, the buildings that they're placed in, the software and the hardware that we use, they're really all designed for a world of information scarcity. But the world has really changed in the last decade, and we now live in a world of information abundance. People are collaborating, they're communicating with friends, they shop online, they play games, they have this wonderful, rich experience of technology in their personal lives, and then they go into the office. We naturally are beginning to look at our physical environments to have those types of performances. We expect them to be interactive, we expect them to be faster, we expect them to um, allow us to do things in a more spontaneous and intuitive way. We've been running companies the same way since the Industrial Revolution, when we made them purely for the purpose of doing the same thing over and over at scale as efficiently as possible. It was based on Ford and the production line. The Fordist approach was about pure efficiency, speed of production, uh, lowest cost. All Fords were black because black paint dried quickest. That whole construct is a dead construct, really. It belongs to a previous era. A couple of factors, among others, have changed. First is things have sped up, and that's self-evident. Things are faster, but they're also more interconnected. And when you combine the two, speed and interconnectedness, suddenly you have this unpredictability. So you don't know what tomorrow will be like. You don't know what next week, and you certainly don't know what next year is like. This world of information abundance, it's really defined on the one hand by this sense of being overwhelmed by constant communications and this constant flood of data and, and us having to cope with it. And on the other hand, it's defined by the immense creative possibilities. So I think what we're seeing is that the world of work is undergoing what I call a structural shift. How do we 
lead in this world? How do we create value? How do we organize ourselves, our organizations, our companies, obviously, to be able to uh, generate value collectively? How do we create a culture that allows for experimentation so that failure isn't punished? How do we budget in a world where we're changing priorities rapidly? How do we assign resources? How do we do management? There are so many challenges that people are slowly working through in this new world. The reality is I don't think enough organizations realize what's at stake here. We see right around the world examples of organizations who have failed to change. And so I think a lot of this change inside organizations is not about whether they're going to be successful or not, it's actually whether they're going to survive. The environment is at stake, people's health, a functioning society. It's the motor of our world and we need to get it right. To understand what was happening, we spoke to experts on the subject from around the world. Join us on our journey of discovery.